installing a stainless steel trough, auger trough kit for a 9000, 9010 series John Deere combine. The kit will include four stainless steel panels, hardware, instructions, and a template. Tools required for installing this kit will include 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter, 15 millimeter socket, 15, 13, 10 millimeter wrench, 3 sixteenths, 5 30 second drill bit, drill, pop rivet tool, 5 millimeter Allen wrench, external snap ring pliers, needle nose pliers or small vice grip, hammer, punch, a file and some emery tape to clean your shafts, a little four and a half inch grinder and I recommend that you get a thin cutting wheel for that. It'll be used in a couple operations. Optional equipment you may want to have is a cordless impact. I use a pneumatic air pop rivet tool, pocking gun, and sealant, penetrating oil, a marking pin, and of course for safety, We'll be using a grinder and a drill. I recommend safety glasses and a pair of gloves. Today we'll be installing the kit in a 9410 combine. The first step we have is to get the combine ready for the kit. Uh, just for this video, I have prepped this combine. I've removed the bearings and to save time on the YouTube video, there's been some prep work done, but we'll walk through all the steps that you'll be able to install this kit and follow easy with the instructions. First we do is we'll open up the, the cover to access. Always remember for safety uh, we're going to use a step ladder and just be careful that you do not fall. Caution with all safety. First thing we're going to do is locate the connector link. Once the connector link is located, take a small needle nose pliers or vice grip, disconnect the link. A little caution, it does have a spring loaded tightener, so be careful disconnecting. Once your chain has been disconnected, there's a set of snap of washers and a snap ring. Remove the snap ring, slide the washers off. And what I do is I just take a small zip tie and tie the packages together so you keep the correct spacings. They'll be on both of the augers. Remove the lock collars. Pull off the sprockets. Another important factor is make sure that you mark the sprockets right or left and front so that everything gets put back in the correct position. I have also marked both augers, rear and front, that they also get put in the correct position. Once you've got that done, you remove your bearings and this, the right hand side of the machine is complete, ready for taking the augers out. Once you have the left side of the machine 
ready to go. Come to the right side. Again, open the gall wing doors. Off. For access to the augers, we need to remove the two cylinder studs. Caution that the door is heavy. I use for propping it up is I've got a approximately a 10 foot 2 by 4 does is allows you access to the covers. Once you receive, once you get your open, remove your four 15 millimeter bolts. There is also two 13 millimeter bolts and two 13 millimeter bolts on the drain hole. Once you have that loose, you can remove the arc. Be cautious at this point because the augers can be sharp. So use caution in removing the augers. There again. Mark your augers, front and rear. Note, the front auger does have the beater bar on it. Do the same process. Remove your five, your four top 15 millimeter bolts. Your four 13 millimeter bolts. Once the augers are removed, you will find we're ready to go inside and remove the troughs. One thing you can do, uh, it's optional to remove the grain troughs, is in the kit you'll be provided with a template Line up the four holes, take your back marker, and draw the V. Do both hogger housings, and we'll sh what this does, it'll allow to save a lot of time. I'll show you inside what happens. It's a matter of we don't have to remove a lot of parts from inside the machine this way, and we can get the cross auger covers out. What I do is I just take a small tiger, cut the V, and remove this little triangle. It doesn't do any structural damage, it just will allow and save a lot of time when we remove the cross augers. Okay, when, once you're inside the grain tank, use caution. The floor can be slippery, so make sure that you move cautiously and safely. The first thing we'll do is remove the 13 millimeter 
bolts from the supports. There'll be two located on top. There'll be four on each of the bottom parts. Here again, there'll be two on top, four on the bottom. Make sure you mark your covers so that they get put back in the correct position. Once that is removed, there's four 10 millimeter bolts that are self-threaded in the left hand end of the covers. Remove all eight of those bolts. Go to the right hand end and there's four, there'll be four bolts here to remove. That removes the covers. So you'll have eight bolts on this side, four, eight bolts on that side, and the two center bolts. The options you have to remove the covers are you can either remove your drive shaft, your shield, your drive shaft, and all them parts, or do the optional grain tank cut like we showed on the outside, and we can remove the covers that direction. At this time, the cross auger covers can be removed. If you turn the corner up, to the slot, there's room for the auger truss as well. Here again, mark front and rear if the front one does have the notch. Reposition your ladder. Again, get your corner located so it'll come out. Remove your cross auger trough. Okay, the next step we're going to do is prepare the stainless steel kit. The kit is designed originally for the 9600. We have modified the kit that it will work in the 94 and the 95 so that our people only need to stock one kit to cover all the machines. If you look at the kits, they'll have a laser mark where they need to be cut. All you need to do is take your little cutting wheel. There again, safety in mind. cut three of the shields. You will need to do that on all four of the shields to shorten the length for the correct length. Once that is done, we're ready to put the kit in the combine. Okay, our next step is prepping the grain tank. Clean the grain tank of all foreign materials. Get it clean so that we do get a good seal. The next step is Remove the 
the two carriage bolts. On each end. This will secure the cross auger kit. Once the four carriage bolts are removed, we can place the stainless steel kit in place. Note the markings. RR would be for right rear. LR is for left rear. Place it in the correct place. Take the two carriage bolts that you removed. Put them in place, have your assistant tighten them down, line up your stainless steel kit, making sure that they do not overlap in the center. Once you have that, you can take a drill, put pressure down, One caution you should do before drilling is check under the grain tank. Make sure all your wires and hoses are clear that you do not drill through. I then take a pop rivet. I use an air pneumatic pop rivet tool to install. Pop rivets. Make sure that you push down to get a tight seal. Move to the other side. Again, making sure that you push down. Make sure that you push down tight and secure the stainless. Continue this process on all the holes. And then move to the right rear. Noting to make sure your troughs line up. Go ahead and drill the holes. Noting to keep your splice nice and tight.
hold it tight. Continue to Continue and do all the holes. Once you've got the holes completed, clean out your auger trough and we'll be ready to put back in the cross auger. Then repeat your process on your front augers. Again, they'll be marked. Right front. again to replace your two carriage bolts in the right front, left fronts. Once you have those secured, have your assistant again help you. Place all your, begin to drill. stainless nice and tight. Again, continue making sure that you keep your seam nice and tight.
continue on. Once you have that secured, do it again. Make sure your splice is clear. Line up your kit. making sure that you get your seam nice and tight.
Okay, now we have completed installing the stainless steel kit. All the pop rivets are in. The bolts are drawn up tight. Now it's an optional. If you want to, take some silicone, caulk the lines. All that, what this will do is help keep foreign material from working down underneath your stainless and wearing out. Uh, but other than that, the combine is now, the kit is installed. Inspect all your clearances. Make sure everything is tight. Pick up all your tools and all the foreign material and we're ready to start reinstalling the combine. We're now to the point of reinstalling the auger trough covers. First step would be is have your assistant inside. Take the rear cover. Okay, take it all the way around. Yet. Okay. Okay, once you get the, we'll put the front one in. Ready? Once you get the troughs in place, we'll get the bolts. Okay, the bolts we took out, and we've got little retaining rings that we took off. We're going to put those back in place to hold the trough up in place. Four of them. Have your assistant start the bolts and then slip the retaining rings on. Once you have them in place, move to the front. Thank you. 
little further. Okay. Ready to install the augers. Note, we've noticed on these augers that they're wore really bad. So we're going to replace with new augers that are available from Abilene Machine. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today is we're going to put in the new augers. Note the new auger, the front auger will have the kick bar on it. Keyed in goes to the inside of the machine. are in place, we'll put the end covers back on. We have put new bearings in. your four top bolts. Have the 15, 15, uh, no, the 15, 16, uh, 15 millimeter wrench right there. That one. Go up inside.
potatoes. One that's sticking back the further it stays in, lift that up and push it in. Get pushed in or turn it in. There you go, turn it. Keep coming. Page.
put it in. There you go, push it in. Okay, we'll tighten them up. See them two bolts? Right. I can't hear you. You push that one in? Okay, find the other one. Okay, you come out. Once we have the new bearings secured, the bolts tight, turn the augers, make sure that they have clearance, which is good. Place the lock collars on place. Take a punch, set the locks, Allen, tighten them up. Take your sprockets. Place the front sprocket on. Place the rear sprocket on. Put your keys in place. Take your sets. Put them in place. Put your snap ring on place. Then, once you have your sprockets tightened down, replace your chain.
Guard your chain is secure. Check your all your bearings, all your tightnesses. You can lower your doors down. Replace the wing nuts. Check all your bearings, check all your bolts. Make sure everything is tight. And thank you for using Abilene Machine for your replacement parts. Thank you.